church, there's one thing we need to keep in mind. When we are coming here, why are we coming here? Why are we coming here? Amen. We are coming here for the prayer. That is our main goal. Amen. We are coming here for the prayer. So I just want to speak about a small subject. And my subject is the importance of prayer. Amen. The importance of prayer. Amen. Otherwise, the impact of a prayer. Amen. We read in the book of Isaiah, there was a king called Hezekiah. This king was sick. Amen. This king was sick death. Amen. And the voice of God spoke to the prophet. And he told the prophet, go and tell the king to make ready his heart. In other words, go tell the king to fix his heart because he's going to die. Amen. And the prophet went to the king and he told him, king, thus said the Lord, fix your heart. Amen. Because why? You are going to die. These are the words of the Lord. Amen. And the king received the message. After receiving the message, the Bible said, he turned his face to the wall. In other words, he went into prayers. Amen. He went into prayers. Then he told God, God, remember me. Amen. Remember me. I have been walking in the right ways of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember me, Lord. And heal me. Amen. And after he prayed, the same God came to the prophet again. And he told him, go and tell the king. He's not going to die anymore. Amen. But he's going to live for another 15 years. Amen. So we can understand he took only a prayer. Amen. That's what the prophet says. A prayer is enough even to change the mind of God. Amen. So if you know the importance of prayer, Amen, then you can do big things. The prophet says, the prayer is the most powerful weapon that God has given to exactly. Amen. So you need to understand the importance of prayer. That God can change anything through prayer. Amen. Amen. That's why the Bible says, pray without ceasing. Amen. 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 In other words, you pray. Pray is not only, but no, even when you are walking. Even Amen. when you are walking in the but you are praying, you are meditating in your heart. Amen. Amen. The importance of prayer. Do you know the importance of prayer? Amen. We should know the importance of a prayer. It's exactly the same as a traffic cop. Think about a traffic cop. When he's wearing this uniform, even if he's a small man, he's the smallest man ever. Amen. But when he's wearing this uniform, that shows that he's a traffic cop. When he sees a big truck coming, when once he does this, the truck does what? Stops. The truck stops not for the man, but for the uniform. It's the same thing with you when you are in prayers. You stop demons. You change your situations. But the demons are not of you, but the thing that is inside of you. Amen. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Fear not the one who can destroy the body. Amen. But rather fear who? The one who can destroy the body and your soul. Amen. Because why? The one who is in us is greater than the one that is in us. Amen. So the importance of prayer is very much important for you to keep on praying and meditating. Amen. It's a pity if we ask how many people pray during the week and how many times. Amen. And when I say prayer, I don't mean Lord and Lord. No. I mean like having an intimacy time. Amen. Intimacy time with the Lord where you love yourself out for a minute. I know we are all busy at work, at school, doing our things, but sometimes all you need to do is just keep yourself away, you know? Keep yourself away. Speak to God. Amen. Speak to God. Why do you always wait when you are sick or when you have a child? No, don't wait when you are sick. Speak to God. 
Amen. Amen. The prophet preaches a pastor of prayer. He says, don't forget the prayer. And don't forget the family prayer. Why? Because Jesus wants to meet you there. Amen. If you are a prayerful woman or a prayerful man or a prayerful person, you you will start to find out some things. Amen. Some things you, you even know them before they even happen. God even revealed to you other things. Amen. But it's up to you. You need to be a prayerful person. Because prayer is very important. That's why the Bible speaks to us about the king as a Amen. Amen. The king has a kindness to us in his time he was a great man. Think of like Putin, the president of Russia. He's sick, he's going to die. And God told him he's going to die. But he turned his face to God. Amen. Amen. He turned his face to God. And he told him, God, remember me. But this is a problem that I want to mention. This is the way to our Bibles quickly. Let's listen to the King's Prayer. It's very important. Listen to the King's Prayer. He says, Remember me now, oh Lord, I beseech thee. How I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. Amen. Amen. Can we learn something from this? Amen. 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 How do you walk before God? Amen. Let's carry on. The king said, how I have walked before thee in truth and in perfect harmony and have done that which is good in thy sight. Amen. 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 So here we can understand the king was a righteous person walking in the way of the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's why God told Abraham, shall I hide anything from from? From who? From who? If you are God's friend, yes. God revealed to you. Amen. God will not hide anything from you. Amen. Amen. You need to know the importance of prayer and exactly what the prayer can do in your life. Amen. Amen. Even you young men here, most of you, you look like a little bit interested. You brother. I saw you guys talking there on the stage. I didn't say anything because I wanted to see you guys now. Now you're all sitting. Hmm? If I can't speak to you, just go straight down the side. The whole service. Amen. It's because you do not yet understand the importance of prayer. Sometimes you, you need to think, you know, in French, we, we say, la nuit porte et vous You see, it, it means that you can try to play around here, do whatever you do, but at night, you come back to your senses and you think yourself that. But this is true. This is true. No one of you here can, can say, oh no, I have this. This one is the truth, and you know it in, in your hearts. You know it in your heart. This one is the truth. So if you want to be that funny guy, go ahead. Be that funny guy. Be that funny person that you make jokes and everyone laughs at you. It's good. Go, go ahead. You are free to do it. But then what are you gaining then afterwards? Hmm? The importance of prayer. Do not be fooled by a friend. Okay. Don't be fooled by maybe, oh no, when I come to church, just, you're not praying anyone, you are praying yourself. If you think that you are trying to impress us, you're not even impressing us at all. You are praying yourself. Sometimes, I'm, I'm not angry at but sometimes you have to say these things. It's true. If you feel like you're wasting your time in church, don't come to church. I'm telling you. If you feel like you're just wasting your time, don't come. Because why are you here? You're wasting your time. 
Not that those are not waiting for spend your own time. But we want you to be here. Amen. To listen to the word of God and embrace Christ. And the importance of prayer. You need to have a schedule. A schedule that no, from, from this time I just put off my phone and I just had my, my own domestic time with God. Amen. Amen. You are always on WhatsApp, on Facebook. What time do you actually pray? And then you wonder why things are not going forward in your life. Brother, this world there's only two things. We have the spiritual world and we have the physical world. But the spiritual world is, good, is controlling the physical world. Yes. So if you're not strong in prayer, brother, you're like a chicken. You're like a chicken. Like the devil plays with you just like this. That's how it is, brother. Sometimes you really need to be serious. Be serious. What do you want for your life? Amen. It's an impact. It starts from you making a decision. Spiritually as well. Not only physically, spiritually as well. Spiritually as well. I'm telling you, it's as simple as that. There was this famous musician, everyone knows him. He died. He killed himself. So ask yourself a question. A wealthy man. Because all of us here, we want to have money and be rich. So that means he had money, cars, houses. So do you think that this man would just kill himself? Just like that. The importance of prayer. These days, it's everywhere on Facebook. Oh, I am so and so from Eastern Cape. I'm a spiritual healer. I'm a Sangoma. I'm going to bless you with this and this financially. Rather, start by blessing yourself. Start by blessing yourself. Amen. Why not to bless me? Bless yourself. Amen. Even the Bible says, don't go after these things that no force can rise up against you. Amen. Amen. The man that kneels down to God is the man that God lifts him up. I'm telling you, it's simple as that. Amen. The secret is the prayer. Be on your knees. When you are happy, you are on your knees. When you are sad, on your knees. Amen. Whatever you are doing, you are on your knees. Amen. And this is the man that Jesus is looking at. Amen. Amen. So it's up to us the importance of prayer. The king has Christ changed his own destiny through prayer. Yes. Because the Lord told him, you know, thus said the Lord never lies, never lies. The prophet says, Thus said the Lord, you are going to die. Prepare your house. And the same of the day came, Thus said the Lord, you are going to live for another 15 years. 15 good years. Amen. Why? Because of prayer. Look at what the prayer did. So, you, how are you fighting your battles? How are you fighting your battles? Brother, don't sleep. Stay, stay away. How are you fighting your battles? You should be fighting your battles through the prayers, my sister. Oh, through the prayers, my brother. Amen. Only prayers. Only prayers. Amen. I can give you my own testimony. Everyone here has a testimony. Everyone here. Amen. Amen. And we have more than one testimony. Yes. A lot of testimonies. Amen. Me, I'll give you one. One of my testimonies, when I was doing my thing, there was, there was this teacher, he told me, okay, believe you're not going to write uh, my thing this year, you're, you're, you're going to write it next year. I said, why? Oh no, I, I feel like for you to do good, you have to come next year. And I said, what, what kind of injustice is this? Just, just, oh no, I feel like for you to boost your marks, you must come write your thing. I thought he was just joking. And then when the list came out for the people to write the next year, my name was on that list. Oh, I was surprised. And then I was with one of my friends who were going back home inside the day. My friend looked at me and he 
told me that she shared that with me. What are you going to do now? I told him one thing. My God is not dead. My God is alive. That's what I told him. Even me, I didn't know how I thought. I just told him that. My God is not dead. My God is alive. I went home. The first thing I did was I prayed. After I prayed, I told my mom. Me and my mom went to the Department of Education. And we told them exactly what happened. So they're like, they went through my history, they said, I said, oh, but you are a good lender, two months, why must you come right next year? I said, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. The list just came out, I must write. They said, okay, it's fine. Just go on. We will sort it out ourselves. Fine. I went to school also. The, the teachers kept on singing the same song. Ah, you can write next year, it's fine. And I, I, I don't be brave, so okay, it's fine. Whatever happens, happens. The same teacher again came and they told me, okay, we, we, uh, the department called us, you are, you are going to write this year, but you are, you are, you are going to fail. That's what they told me. You are going to write this year, but you are going to fail. I told them, you know, as long as I am going to write this year, this is my first step that I have overcome. Yes. So the second one I am going to pass is simple. Just a little bit. Amen. And the exam stayed. I wrote my exams, finished my exams. It happened after I wrote my exams. During January, my phone broke. Okay, it's fine. During January, when the results came out, one of my, my, one of my friends called me, hey, hey, my results came out. I passed with the bachelor's. I said, ah, oh, wow, well, good, nice. So, did you see my name? He said, I, I don't know, but I'll check for you. The second one told me, ah, really? My results came out, I passed with the diploma. I said, ah, okay. So, did you see my results? He said, ah, I don't see your results. Ah, okay, it's fine. The third call was from my mom. My mom, she called me, she was crying. She said, really, I'm phoning you, not because of me, but I'm phoning you because your teachers, they phoned me, and they told me, Mama, your son is going to university. Not only did you pass, but you passed with distinctions also. Oh. You see, what happened? And then after that, there was a teacher. That teacher used to hate me. His name was Mr. Vita. Those who know uh, Swahili, Vita means war. Eh? Vita means war in Swahili. That teacher, I, I knew that he used to hate me. So Peter used to hate him back. But that teacher called me and he told me, he told me, Billy, I want to apologize for all these years that I've made it hard for you. But you're a smart boy, well done, you made it. You passed your retreat and you got distinctions. So this same teacher that told me that I'm going to fail is calling me now. I get to tell you that I passed. I only saw my results after three months. So my, my, so my results, oh, even I was depressed. I was showing it now to everyone. Yeah, you see my results, like, yeah, it's mine. It's mine, Muslim. I must show it to everyone. Amen. Yeah. So, just to be sure, this is the importance of prayer. Yeah. There's nothing a prayer cannot do. Yeah. As long as you are on your knees, pray.
sick. He's still thinking. He's thinking. Okay, who, who was the man that spent 27 years in, in prison? In South Africa, who was the man that spent 27 years in, in prison? Mandela. So the answer came out quickly. But now, why the Bible answers is not the time Give me a short Bible story that you know. Mothers, don't you teach your children at home Bible stories? Hmm? Hmm? They know. You guys know. Oh, so I think there's a problem. You guys, you, you don't be told because you know everything. Okay, answer us now. Give us five Bibles. Give us any Bible story that you know. Any Bible story. I'm waiting. I'm, I'm just saying, but if I'm going to give you the mic, uh, you are going to be in this world. I'm starting this group because here is it's the call group. Any Bible story that you know, I'm not going to do it. You guys say, not going to do it because these are plenty of Bible stories to tell us. I'm waiting. I'm going to give the mic to the mic. I'm going to give any one of you guys. So it's a good now. Not even one Bible story. Ah, the pastor preaches here. Don't even listen. Give me one. Okay, I'm going to give the mic to the brother and I'm going to give it to anyone. You know, you know I'm, I'm, I'm really thinking like seriously, what do you do at home? What do you do at home? Not even one Bible story. Not even one. Not even Jesus of Nazareth. Not even John the Baptist. I'm even giving it to you. Not even Moses. Daniel. Musa. Daniel. Oh, it's a genius song. What is the goal? You must, you know, 
you know, X, where one plays the role of Jesus, that one plays the role of Judas. So they can start learning these stories by force okay. and knowing it. We'll have poems. So this is how we, we learn. So we want to put those practices to them. That's why we need parents. You know, sometimes in the beginning, your children will be stubborn to want to come. So we want you to be part. Yesterday, I was very disappointed. I drove all the way to Hates Park, not even with one people that I want to get from Hates Park. I was very disappointed. So please, let not that repeat itself. When we want, sometimes it's going to be not easy in the beginning, but we need parents in the beginning. We need to lead these children by all space to enter. Once they are in, then we won't push them anymore. There's some of them they are already in, we don't push them, but some need a bit of So help us to help them. Don't keep them at home on Saturday. I think this Saturday we have, we're going to be in Hens Park again. But this Saturday, we're going to go there to share the word of God. We'll make pamphlets, we'll have t-shirts, we'll share pamphlets to people. So if they are shy to talk about Jesus, in ourselves, how are they going to talk about Jesus today? So we'll be there for an hour. Share tablets, uh, pamphlets, talk about Jesus to our friends, neighbors, and so forth for an hour before we come to church. Next Saturday, maybe we're going to choose to go pray in the mountain. We'll go and share maybe a small bread with them and talk about Jesus. We pray on the mountain, then we come back. So these are the programs that we'll be running, and we prepare our acts for the end of the month. We will do an act of certain story. May God bless you.